Arteza recently sent me a box of 25 medium wood slices and I decided to craft the box to see how many different things I could make for my fall home decor. Now, you know, if you've watched my channels at all, you know, I'm changing my fall colors this year. So I'm making a lot of my own decor. The wood slices come in a bag like this with two rows and I went through them to find four that were similarly sized for my coasters. They're cut from trees, so they're not all the same size, but they are nice and smooth and very easily paintable. I've used them before in the smaller size, but I've never used the medium size. To make my set of coasters, I'm using these napkins from Big Lots, some Mod Podge from the Dollar Tree, as well as paint from my stash. I decided to paint two of the coasters white and two of the coasters in a color called Elephant. Now, I like seeing the bark on the edge of the wood slice, so I just used my paintbrush to carefully paint so that I was still leaving that dark brown circle around the edge. I just think it's a nice, cool accent, and you know, then it makes it more obvious that these are made from tree slices. So that's why I was going very carefully when I was painting. Once I had all of the coasters painted, I took one of my napkins and I just kind of opened it up and cut it in half because I was only going to use one truck graphic for each coaster. And you have to make sure you pull a two ply napkin apart when you're doing Mod Podge. So that's what I'm doing here. Just want to do it kind of carefully so you don't rip it and then I placed it down on the wood slice just so I could see where I wanted the graphic to wind up and once I kind of figured that out I cut most of the excess off but I did leave a little bit of the excess just so I would have a margin to work with as I was uh, putting it down onto my wood slice now there are lots of different techniques for applying a napkin to a surface because I was doing it on wood and it's painted wood. It didn't have to be very perfect. It's not like when you're trying to do it onto glass. So I just put a layer of Mod Podge onto my wood slice and made sure I covered it well, but you know that it was thinned out and neat and I got it all the way to the edge. And then I took my napkin and I placed it where I wanted it to be. And you can see you do have a little room to kind of pull it up and remove it, reposition it if you need to. Once I liked where it was, I took my brush and I put another layer of Mod Podge over it. Then I kind of was smoothing it out with my finger, but I did remember that if you have a wet finger, it works much better. So I got a little cup of water and I just used my finger to smooth out most of the wrinkles. Again, the wood slice is not perfectly flat, so it was not gonna be perfectly flat anyway. Then I took water on my finger and kind of wet the excess that was around the edge and I just pulled it off carefully. And then I used my fingernail to kind of scrape the napkin that had covered up that wood ring that I told you about because I really wanted the wood ring to show. I did the same process to all four coasters and they wound up with a different look. The white ones I really love. The gray ones, it wound up almost looking like galvanized metal behind the napkin, which is kind of cool, but I did like the brightness of the white a little better. And then I wanted to put felt on the bottoms of the coasters just so they won't scratch any surface that I put them on. So I got this black felt from my stash and my tight bond glue is a great glue for this kind of application. And I just put a layer of tight bond glue all over the bottom of my wood slice. And then I used another wood slice just to kind of smooth out that glue. And then I glued it to the black felt and I did that for the others as well. And then I used my scissor to kind of trim the excess felt away. And here's what they looked like when they were done. The glue shows through a little bit, but that won't once it's dry. I love the way these turned out. We actually have been using them every day since I made them. I think they would make a great gift as well. You could put four in a set and tie them together with twine. 
I actually went back with my two spare wood slices from this box and made two more after this video. Highly recommend this project. If you're interested in this Arteza product that I'm showing, I will link it in my description box below along with a discount code. I am not being paid to make this video, but I do receive a small commission if you purchase any Arteza products off of the links in my description box. This video is part of the September DIY challenge put forth by Heidi Sonbull DIY. If you like Dollar Tree DIYs, she is your gal. Please go ahead and check out her channel. I'll link it in my description box below. For my next project, I wanted to make a wood slice wreath, which I have seen before, but I've never made one. And I really think it would be beautiful for fall. So I grabbed eight of the wood slices that were on the larger end and all similar in size. And I placed them around a kitchen bowl, making sure that they were always touching the kitchen bowl at all times. This is important because this is what gives the round, nice round shape to the center of the wreath. And once I had the first layer down, I grabbed eight more wood slices. These are slightly smaller ones. And I placed those around the bowl in the same fashion, but I had to make sure that the center of each of these wood slices was kind of centered over the place where two of the bottom wood slices came together. And that's because gluing these top wood slices down is what's going to hold the whole wreath together. So then I just lifted each of the top wood slices and put glue on the two wood slices that it was covering up. And then I glued it down and that's what glued the whole wreath together. And the hot glue worked just fine for this process. And sometimes attaching greenery to a non-traditional wreath can be tricky. So a good trick that I use, I just cut a piece of a paint stirrer and I arrange my florals on that. And this way you can kind of move it around and wire them to that. And then I glue the whole thing to the wreath. And I do this anytime I'm making a wire wreath or one out of an embroidery hoop. It's just a good technique to use when you're attaching florals to something that might be a little thin or a little non-traditional. I used uh, some lamb's ear from Walmart. I think it was one big sprig of lamb's ear. I think I paid $2 for it. I also used a burlap curly Q pick that I got in the Christmas department at Walmart last year. I think it was a dollar or two. And I used two orange flowers from a big bunch of flowers that I got at Dollar Tree. That was about 50 cents. And then I used a Dollar Tree pumpkin that I painted white because the white Dollar Tree pumpkins from last year kind of turned yellow for me. So that's one pumpkin. That's probably about 30 cents. So I did not spend a lot on my florals for this wreath. I wired the lamb's ear and the curly Q to the stir stick. And then I used hot glue to attach the flowers and the pumpkin. And then I used more hot glue to attach the paint stir stick and all the flowers to my wood slice wreath. Then I grabbed this roll of ribbon that I got at Walmart this year. I think it was $2.47 or $2.97. It says thankful, blessed, grateful. It's black writing on like a cream white background. And I used the entire roll to make a florist bow. Now this is not a bow tutorial and I was actually struggling a little because the words were throwing me off. But basically I make a loop and then I twist the ribbon and grab it and make another loop and twist and grab. And then I use floral wire to twist the center. And this is just the kind of bow that I make. There are tons of different ways to make bows. I learned from a florist, so I guess that's why I use this technique but definitely there's way more than one way to make a bow. And then with a floral bow, you just want to kind of fluff it until you like the way that it looks. It's like a very inexact science. So I just kind of continued to mess with it till I liked the way that it looked. And then I cut the ends just to make them look nice and neat. And then I used the ends of the floral ribbon that I had used to cinch the center together to attach it to the wood slice wreath. And then I did use a drop of hot glue 
on the front of the wreath just to make sure that the bow was going to stay where I wanted it to. And here's how the wreath turned out. I have hung it on my hutch in the dining room because I love it so much. I want to see it every day. I love the contrast of the lamb's ear and the ribbon with the wood slices. I just think it's a really pretty combination and I love how it looks in my dining room. Okay, and I had three wood slices left because I told you I made two additional coasters beyond this video. And I decided with the last three wood slices, I would make a wood slice pumpkin. So I'm using my three remaining wood slices and a piece of that painter's stick, the end of it, and some paint from my stash. Again, I told you I'm using like a muted orange. So I took terracotta paint and added white to it and it makes a lovely shade of muted orange. Once I had painted all three of my wood slices orange, I took some dark brown paint. I think I'm using the color Espresso Bean. And I used my brush and just a little tiny bit of paint, almost like a dry brush technique, just to draw the pumpkin lines onto the pumpkin. So I put a pumpkin line on each of the back wood slices and then I did that little kind of <laughs> on its end eyeball shape in the center of the center wood slice just to give it the contours of a pumpkin and this is like a squattier pumpkin you know the ones you pay a little bit more for at the pumpkin patch because they're weird looking and I don't know some for some reason those are more money at the pumpkin patch <laughs> so that's what I was going for here Then I used more of my espresso bean paint to give a coat of paint to the little piece of the paint stir stick that I was going to use for the stem. And then I did come back with some lighter brown and some white paint to give depth to the stem. And with the white paint, I used a dry brush technique to kind of make some lines on the stem just to give it a more three-dimensional look. Then I glued my stem to the back of the pumpkin. And at that point I did put a coat of paint on the back of the pumpkin. I always like to finish the backs of my projects in case they get seen in a display, but I had to wait till the fronts were dry. And then I got this gingham, it's like an orange and burlap gingham ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I absolutely love this stuff and a piece of twine and I tied a little simple bow around the stem of the pumpkin. And here's what my little wood slice pumpkin looks like. I love this thing it's so cute and just kind of different than all the other pumpkins that you see in the store and here's what it looks like in my fall decor displays and that's all that i have for you today i hope it was enjoyable for you to see how i could take one box of 25 wood slices from arteza and make three beautiful high-end looking projects for my fall decor if you like this kind of content i would love it if you'd subscribe here to my channel please check out the playlist to see the other projects put forth by creators today and until my next video thanks so much for watching take care